Hello, Stephen Long here, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Gaston's Great Podcast. This week's episode is part two of a two-part recording in an effort to keep each episode a little shorter. If you've not heard part one from last week, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that part first. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy it. So, um, obviously, this is so many organizations we've spoken to. You know, it'd be nice if one day, you know, you, the servers weren't needed, right? But I don't see that, you know, happening anytime soon, especially in this, um, I don't know, wacky world we seem to to live in. Um, what do y'all envision, anything envision for the future, or is it so new that you're just trying to stabilize it and get to, get to that five or six person sweet spot or um, you know, how, how would you, how would y'all in looking ahead for the next few years, any, any, any big plans besides I heard you mention the closet or something, something simple um, like that. Or I think we're kind of moving uh, kind of out of the stability period. Okay. Into more of a future stability and future growth period. Uh, I think the residents will probably come within the next year where we will get to five or six. I think that will happen most definitely. Uh, I think we'll have to probably expand our staff a little bit at that point in time. I think okay. that will most definitely come. Uh, I, I would say when I when I mentioned, hey, we're a 12-month program, and then you kind of look around, like you said, in the crazy, wacky world, but the cost of living right now is is so bad. So when you so, and I'm not saying we can do anything right now, but I'm just saying that some of our long term and future goals are is to finish purchase purchasing the property that we put a lot of work into because we don't own the property. Um, so we're working on that, and along with that, um, we would like to be able because it is about eight acres of land. We would like to be able to put in some tiny homes back there so that when you transition from the home that maybe we have a separate program where you're, you know, you're in a tiny home for 12, 18, 24 months while you continue to, you know, continue your road to recovery because recovery for an addict is a law is lifelong, right? Is lifelong. So that, that's some, that is some, uh, long-term plans, you know, five, 10, 15 years down the road, the, the road, but I have a Hail Mary too because a lot of times we get asked, well, y'all don't house females. You don't house females, right? Well, what, well, or what about females and their children? So we're just not equipped for that. We're but yeah. because, because I'll say this, when you look at the need, right, when you look at the need, 95 to 98% of homeless veterans are male. That is the need. But I will back up and say also – that part of that vision is to maybe have a home, right, for female veterans and maybe even their children. I don't know. Right. We we'll just kind of kind of see how that kind of goes. Joe, anything you would add to that, or you hear enough for the first time, and now you're like, uh oh, what do I got myself into? No, no, I, I've heard <laughs> these conversations. Uh, I've just never been involved in them, you know. So it's uh, still kind of new to me. Okay. Uh, the tiny homes, yes. You know, uh, expanding. I, I see the need that that if we get any more residents, yes, we'll, we're going to have to expand into bigger and better things, add more staff, so on and so forth. Um, it's still it's still in its, I wouldn't say infancy, but uh, we're toddlers. Yeah, we're toddlers. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so um, with your involvement, you both hadn't been involved with it too long. What what would you say? Anything that jumps out you're most proud of accomplishing, or is it just getting it to this point? And now you feel like you're ready to take on that more consistently, take on those five or six, or is there anything that jumps out there? Uh, I will, I will say that um, just the relationships that have been established thus far, right, that they're going to pay dividends, right, in the long run. I will say um, it's kind of twofold for me because of what I do Monday through Friday. You know, our relationship with the Veterans Treatment Court in Gaston County is pretty pivotal, and their relationship with us is pretty pivotal. We provide housing for that treatment court. We're one housing option that they right. have. Um, I will say that uh, from my perspective and being the board president for a little over a month now, <laughs> um, like strategically moving forward, you know, um, 
finalizing a strategic plan and doing those things and doing the board things right that 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 need to be done but and not doing the board things that don't need to be done and you you've yeah. been on the board before I have, you yes. some of it's busy work some of it and like well, yeah. why are we even doing it? and then some of it is hey we really need to do this so i'm trying to more focus on governance and um the long term care of the organization and it's kind of like kind of we're in a good place right now uh, right now we're in a good place but i'll say and, and joe mentioned it before uh we need more veterans to get involved we're a veteran I, we're a veterans run organization but also we need more people in the community to get involved we need more volunteers you don't have to be a a veteran to volunteer at camp century and i will mention and joe can have to have he'll have to help me on the date, but I think our next work day, and I'm going to explain to you what a work day is in a second, okay. October 27th. Did I get that right? I think it's the last Saturday. I think it's October 20th. So. Pretty sure. Yeah. October 27th, it's like a 9 to 3. Come out to the camp. We do some yard work. We do some housework. You get to see. Because I try to tell people, if you cannot see what we do firsthand, he can try to explain it. Yeah. I can try to articulate it. And it like if you see with your own eyes what we're doing, and what we have done, you know, it, it sells itself. Makes right? a bigger impact. It sure. is so, so nine to three, we normally will cook breakfast in the home that morning or we'll pick up breakfast for everybody. But it's an open invitation, you know, 9, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on that day just to come by. You don't have to stay and work the whole time. You don't have to work at all. Just come at least just come look. Come look at what we're doing. Okay, yeah, that's good. good. What is – um. Anything you haven't mentioned that's kind of what's the greatest need at the moment? Is it volunteers? Is it uh, funding? Just we want to make sure we always touch on that for our organizations we're talking to. I would say it's twofold. It's it's volunteers. It's it's funding. But I, I don't I don't I don't sit here and harp about funding. Like, oh sure. Like I just yeah, I, I we need more people to be involved. Right. Um, our board members can't do it all. Right. Joe and his assistant can't do it all. Um, we just really need more people to just to come look, right? Contact Joe. Yeah, the more people involved, then yep. the more awareness there is in the, right. the overall community. Right, and you Pretty build that, that, that community spoke that I talked about, yep. right? You build that spoke on that wheel. So, um, obviously, before we finish, uh, we'll make sure we swing back and make sure our listeners know how to find out more information about the organization, get in touch with you guys. But is there anything that I haven't asked that I should have asked. Anything you want to touch on before we shift? Because we're going to shift gears. We do have these Gaston County, even y'all are Lincolnton guys, the Gaston County related questions related to, we, we force on our guests. Anything I haven't asked or that I should have asked? I've talked enough, Joe. Sure <laughs> it's because you, you have all the answers. Well, yes, y'all done a good, you've, done, you've both done a good job covering the information. I mean, nothing comes to my mind. Um, I, I'd like to reiterate the volunteer part. Okay. Um, uh, my assistant. Rick, and I'm going to use his name. He started out as a volunteer. Okay. A good and we couldn't get rid of him, so we, we decided to give <laughs> him a job. We tried to get rid of him. Yeah, we gave him a job. <laughs> well, you know what? That's I'm just, the, I'm just joking. He, he's that's, not a veteran. Okay. He, he just he's, wanted to volunteer. That's another thing you hear a lot, that, that somebody gets involved, and, and it goes further and further and further with you know, organizations like yours is where they, they become real passionate, really passionate about the mission, you know, oh, yeah. and to your point about boards and what boards have to do, I've been involved with relatively young organizations, and I've been involved with organizations like the Uni uh, United Way here or Rotor my Rotary Club, which is a hundred year over a hundred years old. It's such a different thing, you know. Those younger organizations trying to learn what a board should do and all the, yeah, you know, some of that busy work, which can seem sometimes to not be related to the mission, but. It still has to be done. Yeah, it makes you it. makes you more. I don't. I don't like the word legitimate, but when you're out in the community talking to people, you know, donors or people getting involved, you know, they need to know that, right? It's a it's a well run group that is focused on a mission, you know. Um, so again, I, I can I can appreciate that. So we're going to shift gears real quick for just a few questions for both of you. Can we do this next part like Step Brothers, where we both answer at the same time as you know what? <laughs> This is this is your podcast. Right, I love Y'all can. I, I, you know, I have to try to have fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> and maybe we can even get some audio from uh, Step Brothers in here. You know, to, to we can <laughs> do, we can dub that in over as y'all were talking. You know, because so that's uh, you don't. I bet you don't. 
you know why why you won't like that movie? Because Will Ferrell's in it. <laughs> She's not a Will Ferrell fan. I don't know. When did I, I don't know, that came up about Elf or something, didn't yeah. it? On our Christmas episode. All right. So we're going to call this the. Um, I love Gaston County, but live in Lincoln County. Round speed round of questions. <laughs> okay. I like so, it. So, Joe, I'll give you first shot at this first one. Um, you ever been to Tony's Ice Cream? Yes. Favorite Tony's Ice Cream flavor? Cookies and cream. Since I was a child. Oh wow. Chocolate. Chocolate. I mean, the chocolate well, is my go-to. What do I say every time? Yeah. Chocolate. I, I say I, 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 I go there. I'm gonna get something different. It's a chocolate, chocolate. milkshake. Milkshake every time. Sun drop or cheer wine? Cherry yeah. sun drop. Sun drop. <laughs> I said cherry sun drop. <laughs> well, that's, you know, actually, that's been a very common, yeah. extremely common answer. Cheer wine's the backup. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite local restaurant, Ken? Oh, local in Gastonia, it can be anywhere in the county. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Black's Grill. Okay. R.O.'s. R.O.'s? Yeah, one problem with R.O.'s is, is, is we have two buildings and R.O.'s is right in, the, right in between, so it's just mm. so easy. It's to, too easy. It's yeah, pull yeah, right yeah. in there. How about favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County or favorite park? I like well. to uh, fish in the ponds near the uh, prison. That park that's right there off Dallas Trail okay, Highway. Yeah. 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 It's, it's called, I guess it's yeah, yeah, Dallas, park. It's it, Dallas it, park. It used park. to be Bigger Staff it Park. I think, I think they call it Dallas Park now for some reason. What's the Castle Park? Was it Martha? Martha Rivers? Martha Rivers, yeah. My kids love that place. My grandkids love it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a nice park. That's the park for us. I'm involved with a group called F3, and we were just there this morning doing a little workout where we meet there on Monday and Wednesday mornings. Uh, All right, this is a question that I forced on our guest, and sometimes it's completely irrelevant to the guest, and sometimes it means something. But I don't know if you're a college sports fan at all, but the question is UNC Duke or NC State? UNC. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I try to make sure this is facing – the right, the right direction. So. It's okay. It's I was told there were no wrong answers here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, that one. There's only one correct answer. <laughs> so, Joe. Um, well, listen. My wife attended uh, Chapel Hill, so we have a mixed we have a mixed marriage. Um, what is something very few people know about you? I'm actually a nice guy. Oh, man, he stole mine. <laughs> is that an accurate? Is that accurate? I would agree. I would agree. Can I would you have yeah, to? Yeah, I'll tell you, like, we always, like, <laughs> veterans, we always have this hard exterior, man. We, oh, we're, I'm, like, I'm just, so soft underneath that kidding. shell. Yeah. I'm a nice guy. I, and actually, I, in my spare time, so I So, you really, are both going to have the same answer? Or no, no, I got, oh, I'm going to oh, okay. caveat. In my spare time, I really like doing nothing, but I just don't have much spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't become soft till I became a grandfather. So, I'm not wishing that voodoo on myself right now. You love it. It's like having minions. Not yet. It's like having minions. It's like having kids without all the responsibility. You can pass them back Sugar on to the, set them uh, home. Back yeah. out to the, <laughs> on, on to the, the their parents. That's and, right. Uh, that's what I've heard. I mean, I don't have. I'm not there yet either. But um, I'm sure. Hopefully, I will be there one of these days. Um, Ken, what about a, uh, something I like to ask is a book or article or another podcast or blog or something that might be useful to our listeners? Well, I tell you, for any veteran listeners that are out there, um, You Are Worth It. It's a book by Kyle Carpenter, the uh, Medal of Honor recipient. I don't want to spoil it for nobody, but Joel Dalton, my, our friend, turned me on to the book, and okay. like, like it's a good read. Okay, very good. I appreciate that. I'm always looking for my next book. I'm always reading something. Joe, do you have, a, you have anything for that question? I, I, I don't have an answer for that one. Okay. Uh, I actually thought about this one this morning, but a lot of the podcasts I listen to are probably not something you'd want to share with everybody. <laughs> uh, it's intense hmm. it's topics, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, my daily podcast is The President's Daily Brief by uh, Mike Baker. It's a little 20-minute, 30-minute podcast. Okay. Um, he's a ex CIA agent, uh, retired CIA agent, I guess you'd say. Um, and he hits daily topics and gives little, little opinions in there, so to speak. So okay. It's just good, good listen. I'm going to have to check that one out. Listen, I'm, I'm a podcast guy cause I, not just because of this, but matter of fact, we started this partially because all I do is listen to podcasts when I'm running in my car. Um, so I'm a big podcast guy. Matter of fact, this, today I was listening to, finished up listening to Mike Rowe, you know, who Micro is, the Dirty Jobs yep. guy, mm-hmm. and I love him. And he had uh, Victor David Hansen on, 
Um, anyway, if you know who that is, he's a, he's an interesting guy, and I got to be careful about remembering that my personal opinions are not necessarily the opinions of the guests in the Great Podcasting. <laughs> You got so, that disclaimer in there. Yeah, yeah. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, God, listen, I appreciate you indulging us on um, on those uh, on those off off track questions that we again make our our list. I mean, I can assume our guest endure. So, a um, couple because there's a couple more questions. We'll wrap this episode up. But something you remember this podcast is we try to focus on, and we we do use the phrase gas and in surrounding area. It's not just uh, always about solely about gas and county, but um, maybe. Joe, start with you on this question. Besides, you know, Camp Centurion, you know, no one uh, remember this is a podcast about Gaston County. Why it's such a great place? Why would you say, you know, Gaston County is such a great place? In Lincoln County, for that uh, matter, Gaston County is home. <laughs> it's been my home my whole life. For my whole right. family, uh, it's familiar. It's uh, it's comfortable. Yeah, it is. Isn't uh, it? I think that was the be- best way I yeah, could describe it. That's a good way. You know, I don't think we've had to describe that way. Yeah, but that's a good. That's a good. That's a good word to describe it. Ken, how would you answer that? I think I think with any community, and, and I, I will speak specifically about Gaston County, um, you have a community of people that are out there willing and looking for opportunities to help others. And and I and I'll tell you, I don't know a lot about Gaston County. I've only been involved in Gaston County for a little bit over a year now since I got you know, reeled into Camp Centurion, <laughs> right? But I tell you, there are there are good-hearted people out there that are willing to help other people, and and I think that uh, that that's the answer to your question. And uh, some people would call that like an underground community, but it's really not. Yeah. You know, I talked to Dwayne Burks at Gateway Gaston yesterday, the day before. He's, he's been on. He's <laughs> like, Ken, because I, I, I was looking for a resource guide, right? I was like, yeah. I'm trying to build my hub and spoke for the court, and I'm trying to figure out, okay. He's like, listen, go to our website, and whatever you need, just put it on there. Somebody will respond. He's like, I can give you a resource guide, but it's going to be outdated. It ain't going to be useful to you. He's like, just you, I said, thank you for the tool. Like there, there are people out there, you know, in this community that are willing to help others. And you know, it's not just nonprofits. It's not just churches. It's individual people, yeah. and it's also people. And I, I'll say it because I see it. I see it in the courthouse. I see it there. They are, you know, people in the DA's office. There are people in the in the public defender's office. There's there's chairs or judges that you know that help with these treatment courts you know i've only been there five or six weeks right and and, but i've been involved and i see these people that have a heart to try to help someone and and i think that's what makes gaston county great well i appreciate that and you know what i i would agree of course i'm a uh, i'm a total gaston county homer so i i'm i'm totally uh, not objective about it but again i appreciate that and and ken has mentioned a couple times about the the veterans court and i would so i don't know the episode number but we had gosh um we had john greenlee judge greenlee uh travis page and and um chad sheriff chad hawkins on for an episode so if you want to know more information and more information about that i encourage you to go find that that episode back it's last year sometime i think um when, when, when we did that one so um, gentlemen, this has been great. So, obviously, again, the main point here is to bring awareness to your organization. You know, who knows? A veteran might hear this, or, or somebody, a veteran's family yes. might hear this. Somebody who, man, wow, that's that really is right down my alley. alley. They want to find out more information, how they can get in touch with you guys, how to volunteer. So, maybe just share anything and everything you can about that to make sure our listeners know how to how to find out more. Thank you. So, where would they? What's the web? There's a website, oh, yeah. I'm assuming, and. I've been. I mean, all I did was Google Camp Centurion, yeah. and it came yeah, right up. But, I, but of course, dummy me, I never look at the URL exactly what yeah, it was. There's a contact form on the website they can utilize. But I, I'll be honest, they could just pull us up on Facebook and send okay. us a message. I mean, that's the the, the website should be uh, campcenturion.org. I think that's right. Yeah. And, and then social media like Facebook, they can only, find it's you. It's only on Facebook. Though, okay. As far as I know, unless somebody else yeah. has posted it somewhere else. But, okay. Perfect. All right, so guys, any last words or anything you want to share before we before we finish this episode up? This has been really good, yeah, and I, educational. I think it was good. I think Joe wants to come back every three months. Sure, okay, we can do that. Absolutely, <laughs> no problem. You can run the you can run the board yeah. and sound effects or whatever hey, we need. Get if, some if you want to keep music sound effects, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> uh, it was what 
Episode 82. Gosh, it was longer, a little longer than I thought. But yeah, episode 82 was the episode about um, um, the Veterans Court. And we also had, yeah, we, you mentioned uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Brooks, Gateway. We, we had him on talking about that and about some work he's doing at First Baptist Church and the Hunter Huss uh, basketball team, which is just really interesting stuff. So to your point about so many good people around here, I mean, if somebody wants to – one thing that we didn't think about when we started this was – Somebody wants to learn something about a local organization. We've got three, almost three and a half years now oh, wow. of information on this podcast where you can go learn more detailed information. A couple, we've had a couple organizations back on a second time because so many things have changed or, you know, some of those first 10 or 15 episodes we had back in 20, early 2021, we've had some of those organizations back on. But anyway, you know, that was not our intent earlier, but then we realized, wow, you know, we can send people to the podcast to, to see some of the great organizations and, and it, you know, makes you feel Reminds you that, in general, people are good. <laughs> right. You know, I also encourage, like, team members here, stay off social media. Don't get your news from social media. Don't get your news from the Internet. Just, you know, what's going on around you? You know, look at what's, what's, what's happening locally. You know, that's where you really um, – that's what we can impact anyway. We can vote every four years, but then everything else happens locally and what that's we're right. doing on a day-to-day basis. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate your time, and I'm going to – Finish uh, off this episode like I do normally with uh, a book recommendation and then my quote or thought for the week. And um, that was kind of intentional this week. I'm a huge fan of, um, and I've shared, I think, three of his books already. Admiral William McRaven was a former uh, Navy SEAL, and um, but he wrote a great book about his life. It's called Sea Stories, My Life in Special Operations. If you're into that kind of thing, man, I would encourage you to read it. It's got a lot of great um, stories, you know, he goes along with his other books, uh, Make Your Bed and um, oh, The Hero Code and uh, The Wisdom of the Bullfrog. The Wisdom of the Bullfrog is probably my favorite one of his, his leadership books, but they're all they're all good. But this one is more uh, biographical on some of the things that he's done. And my my last um, my quote for the week. Also, I kind of uh, picked it. I think this might I might have recommended this book. I don't know if I did. Uh, Allison Levine wrote a book called On the Edge and. She was actually one of the first um, female fighter pilots. And um, she said, there are times in your life where you just have to step up even if you feel like you aren't ready. Um, so I think that uh, that applies to so many things. It probably applies to maybe – I saw Ken look over at Joe right now. <laughs> it applies yeah. to both of us. But you know what? That's yeah. how so many things happen though, right? right. I mean um, – I've learned in my personal and professional life, gosh, if you wait till you feel 100% ready, you may never do it. it. And, I mean, we got people here, so many great people here within our company that um, they didn't feel they were ready probably, but we were able to coax them along. And guess what? They're thriving and doing great things. I mean, but but so many times our – we – we think so little of ourselves, I think, sometimes, what we you know, can accomplish. And anyway, so um, I just love that quote. And a matter of fact, I'll probably use it uh, some other times, too. But, again, I would encourage you to go check um, the, the, her out. And also, uh, Admiral McRaven, if you really want some good leadership um, uh, inspiration, maybe, is the best way to put that. Sorry, my engineer mind couldn't come up with the word there, Naomi. So, To our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address, which is uh, podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We are always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, I think, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all the social media platforms. Thanks again to Ken and Joe for being our guests today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's Great. (laughs) 